Hi everyone, I'm Colin Lefbeaver. I'm an incoming PhD student at the University of California, Irvine, and today I'll be presenting on research I conducted at Indiana University, along with my collaborator, Christina Chung. Our paper is titled, New Understandings of Loss, Examining the Role of Reflective Technology Within Bereavement and Meaning Making. So, as the title suggests, our paper focuses on technology for bereavement support. Grieving the loss of a loved one is a difficult and challenging process, and people can really benefit from external support during this process. We know from past HIV research that technology can potentially provide meaningful bereavement support, but a key challenge here is that bereavement is highly individualized. People grieve in different ways and have different support needs. And so instead of having a one-size-fits-all solution, what HSI would benefit from is diverse approaches to providing support so that we can meet a diverse set of bereavement support needs. And so in this paper, we take aim at this challenge by specifically exploring reflection as a focus of bereavement support technology. We see reflection as a promising and underexplored focus because A, we know from past HSI research that reflection can provide meaningful health support, and B, Past death studies research has emphasized the importance of reflection when grieving the loss of a loved one. And so our motivation is to build on this theoretical link between these two sets of works, and to specifically expand HCI's ability to provide bereavement support by examining the role of reflective technology. But a key challenge in building on our motivation is that there is little past work specifically focused on reflective technology and bereavement support, which of course, by extension, means there are no established design directions for us to pursue. So instead, we turn to psychology and death studies literature for an empirically validated design direction to explore. Uh, what, what we landed upon was meaning making, defined as follows, finding new meanings within a loss which rebut nihilistic perspectives on bereavement. Meaning making is an outcome of reflection in constructivist grief therapies. And within these therapies, clients engage in emotionally challenging reflection on bereavement experiences, and in so doing are able to find these new meanings and rebut these nihilistic perspectives. Very importantly, the benefits of meaning making are empirically supported. It has been linked to positive emotional well-being, as well as improved treatment outcomes from constructivist grief therapies. And so, because of this empirical support, we feel that meaning making is an appropriate focus to explore the particular role of reflection in bereavement support technology. In short, we had to start somewhere, and past work suggests that meaning making would be an appropriate and beneficial spot for us to start. And so, our motivation and this design direction of meaning making led us to the following research question. How can reflective technology built on constructivist grief theory and practice to support bereavement meaning making? We investigated this research question by conducting a qualitative diary and interview study with 11 bereaved individuals. Our participants engaged in an orientation interview, six diaries, and a follow-up interview. And these activities focused on studying their meaning-making experiences while playing the digital game Greece, something I'll give you more info on in just a moment. Importantly, the eligibility criteria and various ethical considerations during participation were developed in collaboration with an expert destiny researcher. Though the full exhaustive details are in the paper, the overall goal of these was to provide a sensitive, comfortable environment for participants to explore their bereavement experiences. So like I said, we use the, the digital game Grease to answer our research question. But what is Grease? Well, it's an indie platform adventure game by Nomada Studio that tells the story of Grease, a young woman who has lost a loved one and is embarking upon a bereavement journey. This journey takes the form of an abstract narrative, which is loosely modeled on the Kubler-Ross model of bereavement, which you might know more colloquially as the five stages of grief. Nomada Studios' goal when designing and developing Greece was as follows, to provide an interactive experience focused on loss that players can interpret, relate to, and find meaning within. And to give you a sense of what participants experienced while playing the game, we have prepared this 30 second clip of gameplay courtesy of the PlayStation YouTube channel.
Unfortunately, that's all we have time for, but hopefully this gave you a sense of the kind of gameplay experience participants had while completing the study. So, now that we understand what Crease is, why did we select it to answer a research question? Well, for two reasons. First, broadly, digital games such as Greece meet the requirements of meaning making. We know from constructivist Greek literature that meaning making requires emotionally challenging reflection on bereavement experiences. And the digital games meet all three of these criteria. They can engage with reflection, emotional challenge, and bereavement experiences. Secondly, and more specifically, Greece itself aligns with the overall goals of meaning making. It emphasizes reflecting on a bereavement narrative as well as finding individualized meaning within that narrative. Gris was not necessarily designed as a therapeutic tool, but it does nonetheless align with constructivist grief literature. And so, though Gris isn't the only artifact we could have used to answer a research question, it is an appropriate artifact, and for that reason, it was the one we used. So having gone through our background and our methods, what did we find? Well, we had two key findings. The first was that many participants reflected on their brief and experiences. Of the 11 participants we recruited and who finished the study, eight reported reflection. One of those, their reflection took the form of revisiting prior experiences. For three of those, their reflection took the form of rediscovering prior insights on their brief and experiences. And for four participants, their reflection took the form of discovering new insights on their brief experiences. To give an example of what reflection looked like, here's a quote from participant 10. Quote, she lost her voice and it resonated with me. During my grief, I was crying so badly, like I was dry heaving and I lost my voice. End quote. So here, participant 10 describes how the parallel between her losing her voice during her grief and the in-game character losing their voice during their grief led to a connection that then led them to reflect on their bereavement experiences. The second key finding was that of the participants who reflected, the majority also achieved what in constructivist grief literature would be described as meaning making. For the three participants who rediscovered prior insights as they reflected, that meaning making was partial, and for the four who discovered new insights on their briefing experiences, that meaning making was full. And to give you a sense of what meaning making looked like and to differentiate it from reflection, here's a quote from participant 11. Quote, you had to switch from the one gravity to another gravity, kind of like back and forth. I felt like I did that same kind of thing when it comes to my grieving process." End quote. So here participant 11 describes how A, a parallel between their grieving process and the game's mechanics, led to them reflecting on their grieving process, and importantly, their reflection led to a new understanding. They understood that in, when they're grieving, they too had a sort of back and forth rhythm between what they described as positive and negative behaviors. And so the critical difference here is that the participant not only reflected on their grief, but they also arrived at that new understanding of the back and forth nature of their grief, which is what qualified as meaning making as the novel insights that, re that rebut nihilistic perspectives on bereavement. So from these findings, we came up with three design recommendations for a reflective technology that specifically aims to provide bereavement support via meaning making. The first focuses on engaging with individualized bereavement experiences. The second, on embedding user agency within reflection. And the third, on focusing on novel and anti-nihilistic reflections. For the sake of time, in this remainder of this talk, we're going to focus on the first, but I invite you to read more up on the second and third in the full paper. So one key takeaway from our findings that led to design recommendation one was how participants connected to the abstract narrative of Greece. The eight participants who reflected did so by connecting with and relating to Greece's abstract narrative, and so doing interpreting it and pulling out details they interpreted as relevant to their own experiences. As an example, here's a quote from participant five. Quote, there was a lot of depression realizing now he's gone. It was very isolating and lonely and sad and I really felt that kind of being lost in the blue water level." Unquote. So here, participant 5 describes reflecting on their experiences with grief-related depression by first, A, interpreting the somber blue water level as being related to depression, and then B, comparing that depression interpretation to their own experiences with depression. It was very much them connecting and interpreting the abstract narrative of their own experiences that led to their reflection as was the case for the other seven participants who also reflect on their briefing experiences while playing. In contrast, though, the three participants who did not reflect 
reported that the abstract narrative was actually a barrier to reflection rather than something that helped them reflect, something they could interpret. Take, for example, the case of Participant 1. They said, quote, I guess the story felt really abstract. I'm more of a person who appreciates words and details as part of it. And so here, Participant 1 is describing the burden of interpretation that comes with the abstract narrative as just that, a burden. They didn't want to have to interpret the narrative to fit their own or even experiences. Instead, they wanted more specific details they could latch on to, connect with, reflect on, and then potentially find new meaning in. And so this leads us to our core design recommendation one, which is balancing abstractness and specificity. As we just saw with the eight and three participants, representing bereavement in terms that users can relate to is an important aspect of supporting meaning making. To reflect and engage in meaning making, users need to feel spoken to by the technology's representation of bereavement. And so, as we saw very clearly in Greece, abstract bereavement representations are safer but less rewarding and require user inter interpretation. The majority of our participants were able to connect with the abstract narrative because they interpreted it to fit their own stories. But for the three who didn't, that abstractness was a barrier. There weren't that many people who were not able to reflect, but it was a less rewarding experience, potentially. And in contrast, based on Greece's experience, we can extrapolate that more specific bereavement representations would be riskier but more rewarding, potentially contradicting user experiences. Specific details about a loss could contradict more of the user's bereavement experiences, but at the same time, they could also more powerfully connect with these user's bereavement experiences, as the three participants who wanted the specific details showed. Had Greece been more specific, it's quite likely that less would have reflected, because they would not have been able to interpret the story to fit their own narratives, but at the same time, it's also quite likely that those that did reflect might have reflected more powerfully. Perhaps more of the participants would have achieved full meaning, full meaning making instead of partial meaning making since they weren't burdened with user interpretation. So the overall takeaway is that to support meaning making, reflective technology ought to carefully balance abstract and specific bereavement representations. When designing reflective technology to provide bereavement support through the lens of meaning making, designers ought to carefully think about the experiences the technology is attempting to connect with and then match those to abstract versus specific representation elements. And that wraps up the talk. Thank you for listening, and we'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our participants, Kathleen Gilbert, Katie Seek, Michaela Krosik, and the National Science Foundation. I encourage anyone interested in more details to read the full paper by scanning this QR code or in the link, or also contacting myself or Christina. Thank you.